It's funny because every so often, um, for those. Oh, of you, by the way, Josh used to come pick me up. And yeah, he, I, I picked him up and taken him to. He would, he would bug me to go because I would be like, "No, I don't feel like it." I was what? Like, he would be like, "You know, you gotta go. Come on." What? He'd come over there and pick no. me up. I was like, "Come on, let's go, uh, let's go." I don't remember that at all. But anyway, take whatever. Uh, for those, <laughs> but. but, but <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and my guest. Uh, I've known my guest for over a decade now, and uh, back in, the, ha, back in the, the halcyon days of when I hosted open mics in Vegas, uh, including one at a place that w was called Tailspin, my guest is the frontman for a band called The Force, who are a cover band but also have their own original music, and uh, they'll be working, working on an, e e an album soon. Mm-hmm. Please welcome to the channel, Johnny Zig. Say hi. Hello. How's how's it going out there in Internet Land? Internet Land. <laughs> we're uh, we're toasting. We're we're having some grappa. We'll be sipping this. Yeah. But uh, sir, welcome to Room Six. Thank you very much. And welcome to Room Six. My pleasure. Yes. See what I mean? Oh wow! If you sit, if you shot that, if you slammed you it, the nodes. If you well, if you slammed it, you'd miss out on a lot of the notes. But also, you'd be just like. <laughs> you know, right, no. Yeah, it's Grappa yeah. de Moscato. You have to appreciate it. Yeah. Meanwhile, mm. room six whiskey. The smell is delicious. Yeah, that's right. How divine. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting bougie up here, sir. <laughs> now let me welcome you properly with some room six whiskey. Yes, sir. Gotta love that merch. This just in. You can show your support for Room 6 by going to room6.shop after this video. We have tons of merch, including discounted cold weather merch and more. Whatever you need to show your support for local music and Room 6 is there, from shirts to hoodies to mugs to posters to stickers. Whether showing off that you're a patron on our Patreon page with our Two Brains One Bottle shirt, or reminding people to just be amazing, room6.shop has what you need to be a friend of the channel. Thanks for supporting Room 6. Merch, merch, merch. Gotta love it. Speaking of which, if you um, if you do want to support the channel, you can buy merch. I've got all sorts of merch on room6.shop. You can also pick up one of my CDs, see if you like it. I'm a songwriter as well. Or you can become a Patreon patron. Uh, patrons get access to patron-only content, including a one-hour audio podcast with me and my drinking buddy, uh, Sean Flume. We talk about all sorts of stuff. It's called Two Brains, One Bottle. I think you'll like it. As little as a dollar a month, you can help me make better videos and also help me support the local music scene by putting on things like showcases. This is the, my shirt from the Room 6 Rock Summer Showcase. Uh, this is the last summer one I'll be doing because it's Vegas and I learned my lesson. I will be doing probably spring and fall, uh, so keep stay tuned for that. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that, and then you'll find out when I find out. In the meantime, on with the show. You, sir... Have been doing music quite a while, right? Yes. And we haven't seen each other in like it's been a, been uh, a over a decade, so it's very, very weird that we're yeah. picking right up, you know, where where we left off. But yeah, we're actually trying to play catch up at the same time. Yes. So this, this whole, is cool. This whole thing. If you've watched, <laughs> if you're if you're an OG Room Sixer, you've watched some of my interviews. You know that I usually have like some deep dive questions, some questions that make you go, "How did you find that out?" Because you forget that you said things or or did things. I don't have those for him. Johnny is not what you would call a huge social media poster, right? Generally, everything you do is, is music related. Yeah, I, I do post funny things. I like to post funny things. I think that's... I like to keep people laughing and having a good time. Right. Enjoying their day, you know? Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, like every day seems like a Monday to some people. Or mundane, rather. Nice. <laughs> so, so, you know, it uh, keep, keeps the day going. Now, are you still also oh, doing the, the handyman thing? Yeah. I do. Okay, and how can people, if they need your services, how can they get handyman services? Um, I everything I do is through Facebook. Um, you can find me um, down in the description. Johnny Zig Munez, mm -hmm. and you can uh, just message me that you um, have an issue or whatever, and explain in detail what you uh, are trying to to get done, and I'll come out and um, uh, I don't charge for uh, you know to give you an estimate and whatnot. And you know, check out what what's wrong, whatever you have a problem with, and uh, yeah, go from there. 
and if you want me to do the work, then we'll proceed. Otherwise, no problem. I and sometimes I can recommend other people if, if there's something I can't do or if I don't know, uh, you know, I don't have the knowledge. I have other people that I work with, such as uh, HVAC or um, roofing, things like that that I don't do. I have recommendations nice. that I can I can throw your way. So, yeah. Right on. Now musically. If people want to check you out musically playing with The Force, or do you do any solo stuff now, or is it just all band? The last time I did solo was at the Rebar about mm, four or five years ago. Before the plague. Yeah, before <laughs> the Great Plague. Yes. You know? That's and... I haven't seen you since before the plague. <laughs> hey, we're a meme. Yes. <laughs> hmm. So basically, uh, no, but I, I'm not opposed to doing that. I, I have had a, a couple of conversations with some venues around town about doing some solo, but I I didn't. That's my fault. I didn't follow up. I'm focusing too much on the on the band mm-hmm. rather than myself trying to get that happening first. Yeah, we've all been guilty. Once of that. once the ball starts rolling, then and that you know yeah that the momentum is going, then I'll probably go back. Right on. Revisit that. Um, make sure to click the links down in the description when you're done watching this because I will have all the social media stuff for Johnny and the Force. Um, why is it Johnny Zig in the Force? Actually, um, I'm, I'm a Star Wars fan. Okay, hey. for one. You may and, have noticed I am and, too. Yeah, so it just kind of uh, came into uh, a suggestion. Um, my drummer, Mark, um, we've, we've actually uh, changed uh, the lineup a little bit. Um, but my original group, um, I had, it was a four-piece it was me, Pete Sittler, Mark Birchie, and Caden Powell. And uh, Mark was the one that had suggested using the name Force. And I tied it into Star Wars because I liked Star Wars. Right. I think what he was trying to convey was, you know, a force to be reckoned with kind of thing. Right. Which was cool. But then I was like, hey, what about the Star Wars thing? I was thinking about the Force lightning and all that, right, right. you know? I was like, that's cool. Yeah. No, and I definitely noticed that you had the font. Yeah. And, you know, you use the Star Wars font. And, yeah. And, yeah. So I was like, okay, I would lo- love to w- wield a lightsaber. That would be amazing, you know? <laughs> there you go. A microphone stand that's a lightsaber. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Built-in lighting. Or, hey. or, the, or the neck of the guitar, you know, hit a button and it turns into a lightsaber. The frets. <laughs> or not the frets, yeah. but the, uh, the docks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. So, oh, I'm, I know there's something out there like that, but uh, and then uh, a friend of ours was like, I don't know, there's copyright laws, and I'm like, yeah, that's true. Can't really say okay. you're part. Of, well, you're okay. part of the air, um, you know, Star Star, Star Wars. Then I was like, yeah, that's that's true. So the for- but the words the Force is not copyrighted. Yeah, that'd be dumb. They couldn't do that. That's like you know, yeah. a cer- that's like a certain former president trying. I mean, to they copyright. they mention it in pretty much every iteration of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. The Force, you know. Yep. At least once or twice in every episode of whatever the force, you know, right. like, but that's cool. Yeah. Well, I like to say, use brute force, Luke. <laughs> extreme force. <laughs> well, How come they don't ever say that? <laughs> <laughs> the force is extreme with this one. <laughs> exactly. Nice. <laughs> so, um, Do you, does he have anxiety issues? What's going on? Nice. <laughs> You're over the top with it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Dial it down. Um, so I, I. I'm going to ask you a, a usual interview question. And okay. I apologize in advance. Okay. Every songwriter, every musician hates this question. But I'm going to do it. For those of you that don't know Johnny Zig or, jo- or The Force, thank you for watching. Um, he's the front man, like I said. How would you define your band's musical style? Hit it! Elevator pitch. We kind of are all over the map. We... Um, well, I, my, ba- my personal background is blues and jazz, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm also all over the map too. Cause I like, you know, country, reggae, funk, uh, disco, rap. I mean, you name it. I, I, I lo- heavy metal, whatever it is. I, I love it all. I, I don't have any, you know, Oh, I don't like that. Or fussy about this and that. Or, I like it all. It's, it's good stuff. Fifties, classical, whatever you throw at me. I, I, I probably, I'll probably like it. You know what I mean? So, uh, but as far as the band's concerned, we, we just want to be able to play music that people can dance to and group to, you know, get up off their chair and, and move around a little bit, you know. Uh, every now and again, we'll throw in some slow stuff, just, you know, 
people want to dance, couples mainly, you know, uh, doing the slow dance and stuff. And, uh, and that's cool. So try to accommodate, you know, whatever the, either the venue requires or the audience is like gravitate, gravitating towards, you know, so that's cool, you know, so the, we're just kind of like a versatile, versatile band. We, we, we can't really pinpoint one influence. It's like all over the map, like I said. Well, yeah. that actually leads me to my next question, okay. which is normally my first question. I don't know why I'm doing it now. What is your earliest musical influence? And I'm talking, what is that moment where you're like, I want to do that? Was it a song or a performer or a particular, you know, genre or what? Now we're talking about a rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Strap in. So I've got, I've got, this is, this is kind of a great. Uh, yeah. I'm not talking like where are all your musical influences. I'm the, saying, the, this, what is that no, earliest? No, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, this, this is a crazy story. Uh-huh. Okay. And we're talking about like, I was probably four or five years old. Wow. Um, my dad, okay. He liked to party. He was a big time <laughs> party guy. And a lot of times he would have get-togethers where, you know, everybody would go home and he wanted to keep it going, you know, but he was too, let's just say, tipsy to work the stereo, right? So guess what? You're the remote control. Yes. He would call me. (laughs) Most of the time, get me out of bed. Didn't matter if I had school the next day or whatever. He'd tell me. Come and play my music for me, and I'm gonna continue drinking. Basically, he didn't say it that way, but that's that's wow. how I'm gonna say it. <laughs> I mean, so that's that's a whole other level of of lazy or or just not. Yeah, I've heard you know because for those of you that don't know, there was a time where remote controls were not a thing, and you were told as a kid, go change the channel, and you had like three channels or maybe four. Yep, and go adjust the bunny ears. Um, so basically I would, I would be changing his record albums or cassettes or eight tracks or something on the radio or whatever it was. And he would have me stay up with him, even though I was, I would be falling asleep most of the time. And he would be like, you know, let me have a repeat on that song one time. He would, this is how you say, give me a repeat one time, you know? Mm -hmm. So... I would go through his album collection. Now, a lot of times he would be playing these records on his own and he was too twisted to actually get the needle on the song so he would like slip and scratch the record. And this is why he would have me do it because I wasn't obviously not in that state. So I was able to put the song. So a lot of the songs that he had me play were would skip because they were you know, already messed with from him <laughs> previously. So anyway... Through that, I learned all these different types of artists that an average four or five year old would not have no clue who they were, you know, because you're not privy to that, you know, um, music, you know. Uh, I was probably used to like, you know, Mr. Rogers or something or, uh, you know, something for a kid, Sesame Street or whatever. So during this time, I learned, uh, you know, B.B. King, uh, Bobby Blue Bland, uh, Otis Rush, um, you know, depending on what mood he was in, maybe he wanted to listen to CCR or, um, gosh, there were so many, uh, Joe Cocker, uh, he wasn't a big Beatles fan. He liked the Stones, though. He really liked the Stones a lot. Um, my sisters, I mean, that's a whole other thing. Huh. They liked the Beatles. Um... Uh, Little Richard, Ray Charles, big Ray Charles fan. Um, let's see. Um, well, so far, you're mostly in the blues. Yeah, and that that was my dad's influence because um, he uh, uh, his influence was from Chicago. I mean, he was right there right during the time when all of the like Muddy Waters and those artists were coming up in the scene, Buddy Guy. You know, and he was right there. You know, it's kind of like being the guy at Woodstock, you know, where you're just like, or or seeing Jimi Hendrix for the first time or something like that. You know, you were just there. And he was there during the 50s. And he was a young guy, and he got to soak all that up. 
you know. And uh, so, you know, obviously he was drawn to that music. It did something to him. So I I basically, you know, w was lucky in, in a way because I got to be influenced at a very young age with that music. So it's like, it's in me. You know what I mean? Right. It's in my DNA. I can't. I, I have to say, it's the first time I've ever heard somebody, when I asked that question, talk about my indentured servitude. <laughs> Gave me the, the musical background that I have. I, that's pretty much, yeah. And and yeah, that's that's a new one on me. Good, good. I mean, good job, Dad. I guess I don't know. All right, it's well, like a good and bad. <laughs> yeah. Here's to here's to, uh, here's to making the best of a of a weird situation. Hey. Which is what I do on every. Show. I'll tell you what. My, my, here's more to it. Um, when my dad would actually pass out. Mm -hmm. from just being too intoxicated, I would stay up longer and pick out the songs that I liked, oh. and I'd listen to those. Nice. You know, and I would shuffle through his collection. I'm like, oh, I've never heard this one or whatever. You know, something that he didn't request. Right. And I wanted to see who, what would this group was so about. So he unintentionally fostered a love of that for you. Yeah, and I was like, who's this guy? You know, and then I would listen. I was like, oh, this is cool. Even though it was all scratched and it would skip or whatever. Right. I, I still got into it. It was really yeah. cool. That's how you know you've had a little too much to drink. Is like, like who's Sun House, for example? Like, oh, yeah. wow, this, this is what Sun House sounds like. Oh, look, John Lee Hooker. Oh, cool, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. And I'm just like, wow, this is great. This is some good stuff. Nice. Lightning Hopkins? Who's this? You know, I'm like, this is great. So from earliest musical influence, I want to transition into more of you. You've been doing music in this town for a while. Oh, a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk favorite show memory, and you performing favorite show memory in any of the various things you've done. Okay. And and it could be like that was check that off my rock star checklist, or that was crazy, or someone went to jail, or whatever. Do you mind if I? Uh... What's that you say? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're gonna take a quick booze break. Booze break. <laughs> booze break. <laughs> It appears I've made a new convert to the Grappa lands. I kind of like this. Grappa di Moscato. Floral, sweet, but still... <coughs> right? It gets you. If it, you take too big it, of a it sleeve... Gets, it gets you, but in a good way. But you can imagine, without the floralness in there, it's just... Wow. What, formaldehyde? <laughs> Kerosene. No, it, it, I'm sure I could light this on fire. Anyway, but I digress. A couple more questions. Back to the music stuff. Stick around. He is going to be upstairs performing a few songs, uh, original songs, which uh, I haven't heard before. So I'm excited about that. I haven't seen him play in over a decade. So I'm excited to see what sort of uh, changes in development have happened. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited. So stick around, please. In the meantime, sir, why Zig? Because that is not his given name, last name. <laughs> Well, at the time when we were coming up with the name of the band, um, we I wanted to come up with a stage name. Oh, that, I thought the zig that, was happening before that. Uh, well, what I thought I remember it was it, it, no, it was kind of it was it was kind of around the same time. Okay, sorry, um, carry on. So uh, basically, I wanted to come up with a, uh, a different stage name because before that, I was known as Uncle John. And that oh, was... that's right, <laughs> and, Uncle John. Yes. Yeah, and I kind of, I kind of wanted to lose <laughs> that because it was like more of a. Uh, to me, it sounded more folk and more mm -hmm. Grateful Deadish, and it would always get you know um, mixed in with that whole idea of the Grateful Dead and everything. And mm -hmm. nothing wrong with the Grateful Dead. I think they're awesome. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I was like, that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, Uncle John's band and all that, you know, which is cool. I mean, that's a great song. Um, but I um, I wanted to be to where I was, you know, individual, as most artists want to be individualized. You know, right. it's like, oh, this is, uh, this is who I am. And it's identifiable. Like, if it's Johnny Zig, you know, it's you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I get it. I get it. So it, it kind of I says, well, I need to come up with something. So one of the guys in the band says, you, you kind of look like the guy from the, the zigzag papers. I was know? wondering if it was that or yeah. if it was Zig 
And, uh, a zig instead of zag. Oh, or, right. or maybe you were a fan of Zig Ziglar. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I actually like Zig Ziglar. He's yeah. cool. So, but it's zigzag papers. Is that where it came from? And yeah. So, um, and I, I smoke. So, you know, everybody knows that. Um, and it was like, okay, cool. So they, they thought about Johnny Zag. And I was like, no. So we went with Johnny Zig. And it, no, it works. It, it, it kind of stuck. And totally I was like, works. cool. I was wondering, I've been meaning to ask you that, so there you go. There you go. Room 6 exclusive. Hey. <laughs> Speaking of I don't which, think I've actually told that story to anyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're welcome. So. All right. Last question. You made it. Yay. Okay. Wait. I hear I hear a teenager. I, hear, I sense a disturbance in the in forest. In the forest. <laughs> Sometimes during interviews, my, te- my, my kid will decide... I want a snack. I don't care. And come down and just make a snack. And I'm like, all right, I guess we're taking a break. So I'm waiting. Nope. Just being generally noisy. Right on. Okay. <laughs> Film at home, they said. It'd be fun, they said. So, as I was saying, last question. Let's... This is a question I ask of all my prey. Let's talk to little Johnny. Okay. I asked you about the earliest musical influence. You gave us a great story about that. Okay. But let's talk to little Johnny that said, I want to do that. I want to make the music. Okay. Mm -hmm. Really what we're doing is we're talking to new musicians. Sometimes new musicians watch these and I, and and how do you answer the question? How do I be like you? I, what I want you to do is go ahead and tell them, tell little Johnny, what is one thing that you wish someone had told you before you went down this twisted road that is music? Well, um, I wish I would have had more um, uh, money. <laughs> <laughs> um, how would you say uh, support from my family? Um, mm. See, what it was is I I come from a musical family, okay? And um, my parents both were musicians. My mom was actually an accomplished uh, musician. She was in, did during the time of the big band era. Okay. And she sang, but she sang in Spanish. So all of the standards, they sang in Spanish, but it was the same music, just, just the different lyrics were, you know. Right. Um, and uh, my dad was also a musician, and he played in Chicago, um, you know, basically like, you know, playing in the bars and stuff like that. Just blues, right? A local musician, basically, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he he did other other music too, just not just blues, but he did other other stuff too. And um, he also played other instruments. He played the piano, guitar, played the accordion. He sang. Um, he did session work too. Nice. Um, so you know he he did he was he made his he made made the rounds there. And you know he he was friends with some of the the acts that were coming up in the scene uh, during that time too, because they were all about the same age. Um. Let's see. Uh, so basically, um, by the time, see, because my okay, I have, I have. There's eight of us in my family. Oh wow. We have, we have six sisters, and I have one brother. So all of my sisters came first, and my mom was wanting them to get into the music scene, so she developed uh, my sisters, you know, harmonies and all that stuff, so that they could be a vocal group and go out and perform. So they basically, you know, went through the full gamut with them. They went to the recording sessions. Da, 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 da. So they were kind of like, you know, it didn't work out. And they just said, okay, well, we're done with that. So by the time I came around, they were just like, yeah, we're not going to mess with that anymore because we've already been through the, right. the ringer. And I really wanted to do this, you know. And they just did not, they weren't hearing it. They were like, no, we've already done that. Yeah, so, you'll just... Change your mind. Yeah, if we buy you an instrument, it's just going to be in the closet collecting dust. You're never going to touch it or whatever. I'm like, no, I'm serious. I'm like, yeah, right. You know, so they, I, I was never, you know, given that, you know, family uh, support in that way that I needed. Wow. So I just kind of had to like tr- trudge through the, you know, the, the the gravel on my own. Right. And um, so your one piece of advice to young musicians or to your younger you would be. Stick with it. I, I think, you know, yeah, don't ever give up. 
your if it's your dream or your desire, your passion, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be music. It could be anything. You know, don't let um, the fact that if your family doesn't support you, don't let that get you down. You know, if you only have yourself to to motivate you or push you, maybe that's all you need. You know, at the end of the day, it's just you and your instrument or you and your whatever it is, your passion. Like, I also like cooking, you know. Um, I also like doing maintenance, you know. Um, I, I have different things that I, I'm into that I like doing, and it's doesn't matter what it is. As long as you stick with it and uh, work at it, whatever it is, you'll get better eventually, you know. Don't lose hope and uh, just believe in yourself is basically the bottom line. So... My advice is to just, you know, stick to your guns and know your worth and know that you are one day going to be better than you are today. Yeah. Nice. I couldn't say it any better. And having heard you over a decade ago and having heard you, or <clears throat> spoiler alert, I've, we've already done the re- performance. <laughs> <laughs> it's trickery. Hollywood trickery. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> But I, 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 having heard you today... The wind was awesome. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's windy today. Having heard you today, I was blown away by just how much more accomplished and developed you are on the guitar than what I remember. And just also more confident in your songwriting. It's not so much nervousness as it is uh, an attention to what you're doing. Which is great. Because I remember... This stuff is great. I remember a much younger Johnny, Johnny Zig who was very nervous about doing open mics. It was, cute. <laughs> it was adorable. <laughs> it's adorable in retrospect, but... Long time ago. Uh, yes. <laughs> I was a very nervous open mic host. <laughs> it's funny, because every so often... Um, for those oh, of you, by the way, Josh used to come pick me up. And yeah, he, I, I picked him up and taken he, him to he an would, open he mic. He would bug me to go, because I would be like, no, I don't feel like it. I was what? Like, he would be like, you know, you got to go, come on. What? He'd come over there and pick no. me up. I was like, come on, let's go, uh, let's go. I don't remember that at all. But anyway. Think whatever. Uh, for, those, <laughs> but, but, but for those of you that don't know, uh, I have a, um, I, I am part of, uh, there's a songwriter showcase at Soul Belly Barbecue on Main Street in Las Vegas. Hal Savar is the host. He's been on the channel and he asked me, hey, would you like to come live stream it, review every, you know, every week's songwriter showcase. And also I can meet people and, you know, set up more interviews, which is why a lot of my interviews take place. And I was like, sure, no problem. He's been gracious enough to have me perform there a couple times. And he he was so funny. He's like, I, I told him I have two albums. I got music. Yeah. I, I used to host open mics. Yeah. I can perform in front of people. And he he had me up finally and I did it. And he was just blown away. And I was like, I freaking told you, dude. Been mu- doing music in this town for over a decade. I, 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 I can handle a crowd. But um, he, I've also had to run things for a little bit while he's been tied up in traffic or whatever. And, um, he was surprised by that. I was like, or it it was great. It was the people who only knew me from room six had no clue that I performed music. They like, they didn't know your background. Where do you think the guitarist on the guitar wall came from? Yeah. They didn't know your background. (laughs) Yeah. Like I have guitar wall, electric piano, electric drum set, microphones. Where do you think it came from? So, um, yeah, he's definitely not one-dimensional. He's like multiple. But it, it was yeah. very... I, I did have that bit of... That little moment of like... You thought you knew? Yeah. 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 And and it was really nice to also dust off the cobwebs and perform again stuff that I'd recorded or just, you know, had, hadn't performed in years. It's whole thing where you go and you're a different person. And you know. I very much did the, <laughs> the Russell brand, get him to the Greek, just... Yeah, exactly. Yes. Scene. Yes. <laughs> so... I'm actually working on a couple new songs <laughs> so, so that the next time I get up there, I'll, I'll have some new stuff. Because I, I always appreciate someone who is like, hey, it's a new song, I'm not too sure about it, but I hope you like it. Like, I will pay full attention to that. If you're playing the same stuff every week, and, and you know, we have some people that are on the showcase almost every week just because they like it. They like it, they're popular, and also, you know, gotta have people play. Um, but they play the same songs because they're also trying to get those songs out, get them traction. And that's how you get traction is repetition, unfortunately. But I digress. We're all done with the questions. Um, there is something that oh, I, I oh. want to bring up. 
Apparently now not. this is this is during the time that we were doing the tailspin jams, mm. and uh, Josh used to come pick me up because I didn't have a car at the time. Nope. And we would we would chit chat, you know, on the way to the tailspin. And where I was living was probably it was maybe good. fifteen minutes. Yeah, I was gonna say fifteen twenty minutes. Yeah. So we had a little bit of time to chit chat every every trip, you know. So what you been up to, you know, the usual, you know. Um, and one time we were talking about, you know, that we should do, you know, some kind of a jam, you know. I remember to where, this conversation. To, to, I can't to where, remember. I remember to this where, to where, you know, we we were both able to play something that we both liked, and we could like, you know, meet on the same, you know, playing field. And I was a, a blues guy at the time, you know, was heavy into the blues. And Josh does this song called. Um, by um, Three Dog Night. Uh, oh, have wow. you ever been to heaven? Will I have never been, been to Spain? Spain? Yeah, do, do. you know. Which I, by the way, only learned because I saw Harry Shahoyan, the 14th most popular Elvis in Henderson, Nevada. That's his tagline. Harry, I saw an Elvis impersonator do this with, um, uh, with. The band called, I think, Rock This Town at the Golden Nugget Rush Lounge. Mm -hmm. He would sit in with them. But he would do this song, and I was like, I like that song. And I started, did the research, I was like, that's an easy song. Yeah, but anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. But no, no, no. It's, it's like, you know, and we talked about that on the way to the thing. He said, do you want to do that? And I was like, sure, let's do it. You know? He's like, well, okay, I've never done this, like, kind of a jam thing before. But, man, I tell you what. We did it, and we we knocked it out of the park. Everybody loved it. And we, we actually extended the song a little bit because we were having so much fun playing it. I can't believe it. you remember this. And then, yeah, and then we actually made, it was like almost like a, a regular thing that we, we would do that, you know? Yeah, no, collaboration like, is awesome. It was, it was, yeah. it was great. I'll never forget that. Tell but you what. He made me feel good <clears throat> being there because he, he basically, you know, came over to my playing field and he made me feel yeah. comfortable. You know what I mean? And it was like... I, I really appreciate that. Thank you for no doing worries, that. man. I appreciate you. That, that was awesome. And uh, I appreciate you. <laughs> I can't believe you remember that. that I'll was... never, I can't forget that. Yeah, that was a good know. moment in my life, you know? Well, I, I was going through a bad depression at the time. Um, mm, yeah, I was recently divorced. That explains a bit. Yeah. The whole, yep. anyway, dark backstory. So basically... <laughs> what, yeah, he, what's your villain arc? He, he, yeah, <laughs> he brought me back into me. To who I used to be, yeah. and then I formed, like basically uh, was comfortable enough through the open mics to you know get back into myself and and feel comfortable in my own shoes again. He helped me do that, and I I'll never forget that. Thank hey, you. No, no problem. I I'm glad to help. I guess. <laughs> Th I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being on the channel. Stick around. We're gonna see Johnny upstairs in a complete time loop reversal thing <laughs> where you're going to see some amazing music and um yeah follow him down down there in the meantime we're going to say temporarily goodbye and uh, see you upstairs room six room six awesome hey everybody how you doing uh so this song is called uh fly me to texas i originally wrote this for a friend of mine who now lives in Texas, he actually was living here, and um, his name's Dutch, and he's a really good friend of mine, we go back since uh, 90, 91, anyway, I wrote this for him, here we go, well fly me to Texas on a graveyard train, fly me to Texas if it's all the same, want you to fly me to Texas, fly me to Texas, Baby, I can't stand it here. Well, fly me to Texas on a red eye. Fly me to Texas, wanna take to the sky. I want you to fly me to Texas. Fly me to Texas. Fly me to Texas, baby. I can't stand it here. Well, my baby done gone and she left me alone Said I could find my own way home I ever make it back to USA I wanna make love to her all damn day Come on, fly me to Texas Fly me to Texas Fly me to Texas
Texas, baby. I can't stand it here. She left me alone Said I could find my own way home If I ever make it back to the same I'm gonna make love to her All damn day Come on, fly me to Texas Fly me to Texas, baby Fly me to Texas, baby I can't stand it here Well, fly me to Texas On the night before last Hey everybody, so yeah, this one is called This Town, and I specifically wrote this uh, about this town <laughs> that we currently live in. Oh boy. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> Alright, here we go. This town Oh, this town This town's a rockin' This town This town, this town, oh, oh, this town, hey, 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 it's rocking. This town, oh, I'm talking about this town, hey, hey, this town, hey, hey, it's rocking. 
everybody's gonna have a good time Stop dropping and drink a little wine Don't matter if you get drunk too Don't mess with me and I won't mess with you This town This town You know I'm talking about this town Las Vegas Hey, hey, it's Rocky This town, you know I'm talking about this town, yeah. Hey, 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 it's rocking. Everybody's gonna have a good time. Stop and drop in to drink a little wine. Come on, let's party too. It's all, it's all up to you, this town. You know I'm talking about this town. Yes, I'm talking about this town. Hey, 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 it's rocky. So this next song is called Bounty, and it's um, about a man that uh, lived back in the western days, the old cowboy days, and uh, they didn't live long back then, so you'll get what I'm saying. Here you go. Watch as the dust clears the air And the pistol smoke Through the door Johnny shot another man But he has no remorse For the poor Riding along on trail never touching the ground at all oh, 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 oh. makes his money killing Call his friend Six Gun Johnny is a man Living his life as fast as he can He and the devil made a deal He sold his soul for a gun made of gold So the story is told Found lying in a stable, face 
face down with blood all around. No one knows who shot him down. Just a forgotten grave. Johnny was a man living his life as fast as he could stand. He and the devil made a deal. Sold his soul for a gun made of gold. So the story is told. Oh, six gun Johnny was a man living his life as fast as he could I want to thank Johnny Zig for dropping by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to know more about him, please click the links down below. Or Room about six. The, yep, about the band he's in, The Force. Also, also, if you'd like to be on the channel, hit me up using my email address or the Room 6 social media link down there. That's also where you can find those ways to support the channel that I mentioned. If you'd like to see more channels, uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe, you know what to do. Click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. In the meantime, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye. ba da ba ba da ba Boop. Like and subscribe.